Hi, this is Lou from Lou's Antiques and Collectibles, and we are junking just down the road from us. It's at the Flat Rock Speedway in Flat Rock, Michigan, and they have a huge flea market twice a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. And this one was from the spring of 2021. So I can tell because in the fall ones, they open so early in the morning, you were usually standing in the line in the dark. They open like at 7 a.m. in the morning. And if you want to get any deals, you better be there right at that time. This flea market is so popular, it's hard to get a parking spot if you come much later. I believe they're open till maybe four or something like that. So here is the line to get in. And if it's, um, if it's raining, it's not always the best one to go to. And please remember to subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Um, but when we had a beautiful day today, so uh, raining is a little bit difficult with this flea market because a lot of the vendors don't have tents, as you can see here in the front. Um, so uh, this is one that's definitely dependent on the weather and how many vendors are there. So they have several rows of vendors in the parking lot area or where they would um, have the cars if they were racing in that area. And then they have an area on the racetrack with a lot of vendors too. There's probably, I would say, at least around 200 of them. Like I said, depending on the weather. So we're gonna go shopping through here and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff I bought and some of the stuff I looked at. And this flea market is great because they have all these fun boxes to dig through. I could play all day in these boxes, <laughs> dollar boxes. Of course, I have to dig through them all. I got lots of little things because I usually deal in smalls. So I'm looking through and seeing what I can find. And I even have to come back to this box because there's some things I didn't see the first time around. A lot of times you got to go through them twice just to kind of get an idea. It's hard to see everything the first time around. And they had a lot of these little button earrings, I call them, or their beady earrings. And I sell those, those clips pretty well. They're like from the 50s, dollar each. I probably make between three and five dollars a pair on those, depending on uh, what color they are and how good a shape they are and that type of thing. So I pulled a few pair out of there. And now we're down to another box. And I believe these bags were $3 a piece. So yes, I do spend more than a dollar on occasion, <laughs> but I always like the dollar stuff and the quarter stuff the best. So here's a little a turquoise necklace. It's not real turquoise, but anything turquoise sells really well. So um, I always keep my eye out for that. There was another turquoise necklace there in the corner, but it had pearls on it and it was kind of plasticky looking. But this one is pretty. But the biggest thing with a necklace like this, it had all those little dangly things on it. And those would be really tough to replace. So I had to lay it out a few times just so I knew it had all those little pieces on it. Um, oftentimes, if you can get a set like this and there's earrings to match, sometimes what I've done is taken the pieces off the earrings to fix the necklace because the necklace is obviously um, the most valuable part of it. But this one it had all the stuff on it. So that was good. So I definitely picked up on that one for $3. That was a really good buy. It was a nice piece. I think I put maybe uh, $12, $13 on that at the antique mall. So that was a good little profit. And I go back to this box here. Because I know there was a bracelet in there I needed to come back to. Oh, rings in the corner. Costume rings always do well for me. I usually can make between $10 and $15 on a costume ring. But you really have to be careful on the bottom. You can see I checked the, the shank of the ring. If, if it's worn off, the metal is worn off and the gold is worn off or, or silver or whatever, um, they're not worth anything. They're probably worth a buck. So I picked one out of there. And the other ones, um, the shank piece was bad and that was the bracelet I came back for that was a nice piece and they have everything here they have furniture they have smalls they have military it you just never know with this flea market there can be a lot of really cool things and there can be a lot of junk too. <laughs> but but it's it's a really good variety 
and the prices are pretty reasonable. These salt and pepper were, shakers were a dollar a pair. And I would have got that cat. That one was really cute. He was missing an ear and it was leather. And I, I didn't know how I could fix that. That would have been kind of tough. So there's some signs. Signs and um, all kinds of weird things in boxes. <laughs> So I didn't get those salt and pepper shakers that I'm setting down there. They were a little wood set with faces on them. Those were really cute. For a dollar a set, that's kind of a no-brainer. But I look for more than usual, not the typical ones. People won't buy those. They want something a little bit different. And here was a big box of cars and jewelry together. And uh, some of the folks bring all their own tables, and some people just bring these large tarps, and they put all the, everything on the tarps. To be a vendor at this flea market, because I've been a vendor several years ago, you have to line up and they let you in like at midnight after the races have happened and then you um, you open up at seven in the morning. So you either have to stay the night in your car or you um, have another person with a car there and you can go home and come back. And come back. So um, it's uh, kind of tough. <laughs> to be a vendor at this flea market and I'm just not real interested in staying the night in my car anymore. So here's a little cute box. It has a music box in it. Um, it didn't work though, which was kind of a bummer. It was a nice little piece. I would much rather shop at this flea market than be a vendor here. It's much more fun, of course. So we have all kinds of little items and and uh, liquor bottles, vintage ones, and a lot of glassware, of course. That little lantern was new, but I picked that up for three bucks. That's that's $10 all day. So even though it wasn't old, those are good sellers in my booth. Everybody likes lanterns right now. This I would have bought for $3. That was a really good deal, but there was just one, and I didn't think anybody would just buy one candlestick. So I passed on that one. It was new, but it was so cute. So that was a whole basket full of corks. And that candelabra was nice, but very tarnished, which some people like them like that. But I passed on that. Oh, this little willow tree figure I picked up on for a buck. Those sell really good. They're new collectibles, but I always buy those when I see them. Those people really like those. And here's a bunch of furniture and that little white iron rocking chair. We had one just like that in our front porch. Maybe it's the same one. Who knows? I think I sold it in a garage sale years ago. And here's some more tables of a very big variety of things. That little Halloween uh, blow mold there. Oh, that was so nice. I wanted to buy that so much, but it was just too much money. The holiday blow molds are really becoming expensive these days, but if you can get them for a reasonable price, they sell really well. I keep telling everybody, everybody was blow mold crazy at Christmas time this year. I'm not sure what that was all about, but, but it was great. There's a Petoskey stone there on the table. And uh, that was a nice little bracelet. I did buy that. I believe I paid a dollar for it. It had some stones in it. It was nice. A nice older piece, probably from the 50s, 60s. This was newer, but it was nice. This necklace, I liked all the big rhinestones on it. And these little, um, I think they're Alex and Annie or Amy or something like that. Bracelets, they're quite popular with the young girls. Um, their um, costume type jewelry. I, you may be able to get them in sterling, but I always look for those just because they're very good sellers. My daughter was really into those at one time and and uh, every time I found one, it never made it to the mall because she took it. <laughs> Here's some Vaseline glass there. And this booth, if the prices were right, all this Christmas stuff, I'd have bought every bit of it. This is exactly the types of things that I look for to sell at Christmas. I did get quite a big uh, 
a lot of Christmas items similar to this at a garage sale before the season. And let me tell you what, I have made so much money off that stuff, but this stuff was priced too high and I wasn't able to, um, to get a good enough profit for it. But boy, this is the stuff I love. Very popular. Christmas collectibles have become really popular, especially like these elves. I think I had 20 elves and I bet I sold every one of them this last Christmas. So these are, if you can get this stuff for a good price, buy it. It will sell. Great, great sellers. Especially those little figural pieces like this. Very nice. I, I think they were around $5 a piece. I can't pay that much for them. I probably only get about six, six to maybe $8 a piece. That one was really cute. Little drummer boy. Yes, and those are the elves that are really popular. I get about $15 a piece for those elves. So those do real well. And here's another jewelry table. Ooh, that's a pretty pin. Must have been too much money. I think I passed on that. I like those tassel necklaces too. Those are quite popular. It's interesting how some of the jewelry, you go from vendor and vendor and the, the vendor to vendor and the prices are so inconsistent. And you never know because some people don't put prices on. You go to one table and everything's a dollar. You go to the next table and everything's $20. It's just, you really got to look. That was a nice piece of crackled glass. And this dealer here, I have seen her in shows in uh, Toledo and Bowling Green, Ohio area. And she is one of my favorite vendors. Her prices are so reasonable. I always buy a ton of stuff from her and we seem to like the same types of things. So there's a dog for a dollar, no brainer. I will always buy a dog or a cat for a dollar because those are always good sellers. Not big money makers, maybe three to five dollars, but they always do sell. And you need to sell all those small items in your booth to help um, with your profit. Not everybody wants to spend $20, $30 in your booth, but they might spend five or six. This elephant was so cute for a dollar. Bought that one and that has already sold. I think I sold it for $6. So those three animals I bought from her and um, I always look at religious stuff because I am Catholic. So I got to see what's on there. If there's something I don't have or there's something new. And I don't even believe you're supposed to sell these things. They're supposed to not have any value but I do see them a lot at garage sales and flea markets. And these two pictures are um, really nice. A dollar each, no brainer. Great old frames, they're in good shape. Bought both of those. And I had to really look carefully at her booth because she has a lot of hidden treasures. So we're looking around on this side of the table and you always got to check on the on the ground because look at all the items that are on the ground that if you didn't look down you wouldn't see. And these salt and pepper shakers were super cute. I'm not quite sure why I didn't buy them. I want maybe they had a chip on them. Sometimes when you watch these videos later you're like, "Why did I buy that?" <laughs> That was a good deal. This box was a great deal. I did buy that. It was only $2. Those little porcelain boxes always sell well. Not high ticket items again, but they're nice and, you know, and people like them. They're like, I usually put five, six bucks on them. If they're fancier, of course, more, but uh, that was kind of a more standard one. And on the ground there, oh, those two yellow bowls are uh, Depression Era kitchenware they were nice I have several of those in my booth right now and this little vase here was interesting I thought maybe it was signed on the bottom or had a Preston um, name but nothing it was plain on the bottom just a cute vase now here's the track area of the Flat Rock Speedway sale and um, um, it's kind of interesting because the vendors are on this track, but the track is not flat. It's on an angle. So you have to walk kind of funny to go around to this, but it's definitely worth it because there's some good items in here. 
So here's some uh, metal items and some fishing things. Like I said, a big variety. It, it will appeal to pretty much anybody because it's such a big variety. This uh, chicken thing for $30 was really nice, but I can't even get $30 for that at the antique mall. So I, even though I like them, I passed on that. I like that birdie, but even though it was new and that was $25, that's way too much. I probably could get maybe 20 bucks at it at the antique mall. So you have to really watch what you're buying and watch what you're paying so that you're making a profit. Even though you like certain items, you have to pass on them if you're not going to make a big enough profit. Now, if you're buying it for yourself, that's different. You buy what you like. But for me, I'm looking to make a profit off the items I bought here. There's lots of small items. Looks like a swan for a car or something. Pez figurines. Lots of collectibles. And some uh, Mickey and Minnie items. I always check those out for my daughter. And I was going to buy them, but uh, they had some nips on them, so I decided not to. This was a beautiful piece. Very nice. And I checked it for chips, because you really have to be careful when you're buying something especially ruffled like this in glassware. And the bottom seemed good it had a little ridge where the uh, seam was where they poured it into the mold but that's okay as long as it's not chipped so that one i was obviously very interested in because i really looked and i believe i got this for five dollars I asked if he would take less and i did buy that that was a really good bargain that was a piece of fenton glass very nice colored turquoise. This metal stuff is new, but this is really neat stuff to have for your house for decorating. Um, if I could get it reasonable, I, I would buy a lot of it for the mall because it's very popular right now. But um, these folks are obviously are looking to make a profit too. They had a lot of reproduction glassware. You have to be super careful because look at all this. There's Mr. Peanut in a reproduction. And those turquoise glasses are all reproductions. There are original ones of those, but those are the reproductions. Typically, the reproductions are a little bit thicker and their seams are a little bit rougher, but they're very similar in style. Almost exactly the same. This booth had all reproductions. Yeah, except these bags of jewelry. They had some bags of jewelry I kind of dug through a little bit. See if there was anything kind of interesting. Which was a little odd, being they had all reproductions, but they must have bought a jewelry lot at one time or another. It's kind of hard to buy them in these lot bags. You don't know if uh, the stuff is all broken or if there's good things in there. Um, I tend to put in my jewelry, if it's broken pieces, I put craft jewelry. And if it's not, I just put uh, jewelry so that people know that Craft jewelry is something you would use the pieces and the parts to make things. And here's some more metal signs they had. Very nice, very beautiful. You want to decorate your home, but not nothing I can make a profit on. Fun to look at, though. And boy, some of that stuff looks really old. You could really be fooled by it. But it's very pretty. If you're just decorating your house and you don't care, then they have great things. And we're back to some more older items here. And lots of stuff on the ground again. There's some trains. And some glassware. A very mixed, assorted variety. You have to really look. I usually spend two or three hours here, but if you really looked at every little item, you could spend probably the day here. There's a nice little kitchen glassware. That little uh, flower glass there, that's a nice piece. It's hard to do much with just one, though. I did buy a couple little items here. They originally had $5 in that little, um, that little dish, and I believe I got it for a dollar or two. So that might have been a, a earlier price and they decided to mark everything down 
Yep, there's our sign there. Everything's like a dollar. So, of course, I have to look because that's my kind of price. So, I got an old tin. I got these little baskets with these little ladies on there. I think I got two of those. Those were super cute. Old Japan figurines. Not high dollar things, four or five dollar items that I could get out of those, but very cute. So I didn't get any real big ticket items, but lots of smalls. And here's another one with a blue dress. I bought both of those. Super cute. And there's some uh, kitchen, kitchen uh, tools. I had a lot of those. I typically won't buy a kitchen tool unless it has a red handle on it. The red wooden handle ones seem to be more collectible. But they're not real highly valuable. I usually try to pay a buck or so for them, and I can get between 5 and $6 a piece out of those. Um, rolling pins, if they have the old wooden handles, are a little bit more money. I could probably get 8 to $10 out of those. So here's some more collectible type items. These tables were fun. I wish we had some things going on like that in the winter here. I did get this little lamb. It was a little uh, plant holder. Very cute. Probably from the 50s. So I bought quite a few items from this vendor. And this picture was really nice. And the saddest thing happened. I bought this pitcher and something fell on my bag on the way home and it broke all over my car. That was so sad. It was such a cool piece, both of those were. But sometimes that kind of thing happens. It's really um, important that you pack your things well and I was moving too fast and it was my own fault. But um, I uh, learned a lesson and I will be much more careful when I'm loading my car and maybe even re-wrapping the pieces when I get to my car. So a lot of times they don't even wrap the pieces and you, uh, you typically have your own bag and um, if you can make it to the car you can re-wrap it there otherwise bring some newspaper along with you. Some of the dealers have all that packing material and some don't. It just depends on who it is. That was like a manger scene. That was kind of cute. And these were the vendors, we call them the Deals on the Hill. These guys, an assortment of guys that come with these big trucks full of things from Detroit. Um, they uh, work on homes and I think they uh, haul out all the stuff of the old homes in Detroit and they put them in big uh, uh, boxes and cartons and they haul it to the flea market and you hear them say all day, Deals on the Hill. So those are a lot of fun to go through their stuff. You never know. Sometimes it's not so much of a deal. On the hill it depends because sometimes their prices can be a little bit high but um, I found a few gems in those boxes you got to be willing to dig and it's very dirty because it came straight from their houses that they went through <laughs> and demolished these rings were nice this was um, a ring they call this a poison ring sometime but in reality this ring um, held salad perfume and I collect salad perfume so I'm always looking at those uh, a lot of them were made by uh, Avon or Estee Lauder or those um, type of companies. But they're, they're pretty neat. But a lot of people call them poison rings because they say they used to put the poison in there. But in reality, it was perfume they put in there. I suppose you could use it for a pill or something if you wanted. And here's some nice license plates. If you want it for your decor your old cars and lots of box lots everywhere and some dvds my husband should have been there he's the dvd buyer there was lots of dvds throughout this whole flea market and some more jewelry for me to dig through and thanks for watching and come and junk with me another time and this is Lou from Lou's Antiques 
saying goodbye from the Flat Rock Historical Flea Market in Flat Rock, Michigan.